The origins of Western philosophy date back to the works of Greek philosophers in the 5th and 6th centuries BC. This period is referred to as the pre-Socratic period. Greek philosophers of this period began to understand and question the world. Instead of attributing what was happening to the Greek gods, philosophers sought to understand it with the phenomenon of reason. Pre-Socratic philosophers questioned where everything came from, what everything was created from, how nature could be explained mathematically, and how plurality in nature could be explained. They endeavored to find a basic principle, a starting principle known as the Archie, which constitutes the basic material of the universe. The fact that everything in the universe does not look the same or is not exactly the same due to the fact that the Archie does not remain in a state, the pre-Socratic philosophers decided that there must be principles of change contained in the Archie. What does the pre-Socratic period mean? This term was coined by the German philosopher Hermann Diels in 1903. In the pre-Socratic period, Socrates had not yet died. The term focuses more on differences in ideology and principles. Important schools of philosophy were founded in this period. The ideas of these schools of philosophy have survived to the present day. Some of these schools of philosophy are as follows, Miletus School, Pythagoras School, Ephesus School, Elia School, Automist School. Let us now examine the philosophical schools and philosophers of this period and their thoughts. Let us start with the school of Miletus. The Miletus School was founded in the city of Miletus. This school produced three important philosophers. These are Thales, Anaximandros, and Anaximenes. Thales argued that the Archie, the main element, was water. He determined that water could change according to the principles of change such as evaporation and condensation, and therefore could exist in gaseous or solid form. He also stated that water is responsible for moisture and nutrition. Thales believed that the earth stood on water. Anaximander suggested that the main element was in fact an undefined, limitless, and indeterminable substance known as a pyron, which was in fact wet and dry, opposites such as cold and heat were separated from each other according to him. Anaximenes believed that the main element was air. According to him, air existed on the ground. Air has the ability to undergo various processes, to transform into other things such as water, clouds, wind, fire, earth. Our second school of philosophy is the Pythagorean school. The famous philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras believed that mathematical relationships underlie all reality and that mathematics governs everything. According to Pythagoras, numbers were sacred, everything could be measured and predicted using mathematics. Pythagoras' influence and image were marvelous. The school he founded was like a cult. His followers listened to his every word. They followed his bizarre rules, which covered everything from what to eat and what not to eat, how to dress and even how to urinate. The Ephesus School is next. The work of the Ephesus School is based on the work of Heraclitus of Ephesus. Heraclitus believed that everything in nature is constantly changing or in a state of flux. He is perhaps most famous for his belief that no one can enter the same river twice. Heraclitus believed that the basic element is fire and that he believed that everything expressed fire. The school of Elia produced four important philosophers. Xenophanes, Parmenides, Zenon and Melissus of Samos. Xenophanes is known for criticizing religion and mythology. In particular, he harshly criticized the conception of the gods in human form. Xenophanes believed that there was only one god who, although he did not physically move, had the ability to hear, see, and think, and who moved the world with his thoughts. Parmenides argued that reality is not a and that truth could only be reached through reason, not through the senses. According to Parmenides, it was completely meaningless to discuss what is and what is not, because the only thing that is understandable to discuss and the only thing that is true is what is. Parmenides greatly influenced Plato and the whole of Western philosophy. Through his work, the school of Elia became the first movement to use reason as the sole criterion for finding truth. Zenon of Elia was one of Parmenides' most well-known students. He spent all his time creating paradoxes in defense of Parmenides' ideas. In his most famous paradoxes, the paradoxes of motion, Zenon tried to show that ontological pluralism, that is, the view that there is not one but many things, would in reality lead to absurd conclusions. Parmenides and Zenon believed that reality exists as one thing, and that things like pluralism and motion are illusions. Melissus of Samos was a philosopher who continued the ideas of Parmenides and Zenon. Melissus of Samos distinguished between what exists and what appears to exist. If something is X, then according to Melissus of Samos it must always be X. Therefore, according to his thought, if something is cold, it can never cease to be cold. But since this is not the case, and since properties are not preserved forever, in fact nothing is never what it is, but rather what it seems to be. Finally, let's take a look at the Atomic School. Founded by Leucippus in the 5th century BC and continued by his student Democritus, the Atomist School believed that every physical object consisted of atoms and emptiness organized in different ways. This view is not so far from the concepts we know today about atoms. 
According to the thought of this school, atoms were incredibly small particles differing in size, shape, motion, organization and position, and when these atoms came together, they formed the things in the visible world. In this video, we briefly touched upon the state of philosophy before pre-Socrates and the views of philosophical schools and philosophers. With this video, which is an introduction to philosophy, we will also introduce the history of the development of philosophy. This subject is especially important for understanding Western philosophy.